Museum of Witchcraft. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back right after these words. Hi, Tom Bodet. If you can hear me, then you have an internet connection, which means you can do cool things online, like listen to streaming radio, obviously, or watch a video of a monkey washing a cat. Let your freak flag fly. Or you can book a room at a great price at motel6.com. Isn't the internet wonderful? Everything you want right at your fingertips, and whoa, did not need to see that. <clears throat> I'm Tom Bodet for Motel 6, and we'll leave the light on for you. Unexpected reactions to smart financial decisions brought to you by FeedThePig.org. Well, I finally did it. My student loan is totally paid off. I can't believe it. I can't believe it either. I paid more than the minimum each month, and soon enough, it was gone. So you're just giving up? Giving up on what? The life of luxury. Egyptian cotton, caviar Thursdays, designer everything. What are you talking about? Our plan. What happened to winning the lottery and mastering the art of the perfect mimosa? Hosting galas, wearing enough jewelry to require a bodyguard, vacationing in the French Riviera, and then buying it. I just thought maybe it was time to prepare for my future. You know, set some financial goals, make some smart investments, open a 401k. Financial goals? Investments? A 401k? You are horrified right now. Listen, if winning the lottery were easy, everyone would do it. When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. Northern Tool and Equipment. So me and the boys head out to tailgate today and find some other fans in our spot. Well, it happens. Uh, cheering for the wrong team. Oh, this is war. Even worse, they've got this couch set up and everything a couch yeah it's a uh, sectional all right first thing don't ever use the word sectional again done second i want you to grab a 4700 pound tow chain with j-hook and grab hammer throw that on the back of your truck got it now you're gonna hail mary the j-hook over the end of that couch time to find a better spot for your new friends There's no problem. A little horsepower can't solve. Northern Tool and Equipment. Taking a family of five to the amusement park can cost a small fortune. Oh, yeah. So to save some money, we thought, hey, let's bring the amusement park to us. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Uh, step right up. Step right up, young man. Are you ready to ride the Wacky Waterfall? That's just the bathtub with the shower head running. Nope, it's the Wacky Waterfall. It's the shower, Dad. Waterfall. Wacky. There's an easier way to save. To get a free rate quote, go to Geico.com. Then buy online, over the phone, or at your local Geico office. Green light. Hey, girl. School zone. I'm getting hungry. Car changing lanes. You want to meet me for pizza? Stop sign. Intersection clear. Yeah, street. Pizza sounds good. Ball in street? Girl in street! <gasps> It's hard to concentrate on two things at once, like texting and driving. Stop the text, stop the wrecks. How will you stop texting and driving? Tell us at stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Welcome back to After Hours AM, everybody. I'm your host, Joel Sturz. Right along with me, as always, Eric Olson. Eric, yeah. Eric, Eric. We are talking something really cool. The Buckland Museum of Witchcraft, man. I have uh, been interested in talking to these two all day because I was kicking around the website. But I will step aside. <laughs> all, just, all day, man. All day. I'm like a kid at Christmas. I really am. I'm looking up at the lights going, <sighs> What are you coming, you big fat bastard down my chimney? Oh, oh sorry. I went a little, 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 little visual that one, didn't I? It's a different holiday. Uh, it is a different holiday, but it all ties together, really, at the end, right? You're, Come on. You're right. Come on. It all we does. We've discussed that many times. We have. The, we have. The blending have. of Halloween into uh, Christmas. It is. There's a big blending, but I will step aside and let you blend your way through this introduction. All righty then. Cleveland's Buckland Museum of Witchcraft and Magic features artifacts from the collection of one of the founders of Wicca in the 20th century, Raymond Buckland, along with contributions from many other luminaries of the craft 
and contextual popular culture items assembled with the mission to display the tools and imagery of witchcraft and magic while celebrating the First Amendment and the power of outsider art. Raymond Buckland started the Buckland Museum of Witchcraft and Magic in 1966 after visiting the late Gerald Gardner and his collection on the Isle of Man, which we just mentioned a while ago. Raymond was inspired to start a collection of his own. While working for British Airways, he was able to acquire many of the artifacts in this collection from all around the world. He initially displayed his museum on a few shelves in the basement of his Long Island home. However, over time, Raymond's witchcraft collection rapidly swelled. It swelled and inflated to well over 500 artifacts ranging from ancient Egyptian Ush- Ushabtis, I, uh, I was going to get it, Ushabtis, to documented artifacts from the Salem Witch Trials. This was the very first museum of its kind in the United States with an anthropological approach to the world of folklore and the supernatural. The museum was in existence for 10 years in this New York location. During that time, it was featured in numerous magazines and newspaper articles. It was the subject of a television documentary. The New York Times, The Post, Newsday, Look Magazine, Cosmopolitan, on and on and on, including foreign magazines that feature the articles about the museum. Raymond was also interviewed on a large number of radio stations, national and international television. The Metropolitan Museum of, Museum of Art requested and featured some of the pieces in one of its special exhibits. In 1976, Raymond Buckland moved to New Hampshire, where he opened the museum from 77 to 80. Unfortunately, because of a rigorous writing and a lecture schedule, he then had to place the museum collection into storage, what remained for a number of years good to no one but the rodents. The museum collection was briefly reestablished in New Orleans in 1999, where it passed through multiple hands before being salvaged by Reverend Velvet Wreath. Now, that's a name. That's a great uh, name. bit damaged and somewhat reduced collection, Velvet was instrumental in preventing the collection from degrading further and being lost. In July of 2015, the museum collection was relocated to Ohio and is now displayed in the newly founded Buckland Museum of Witchcraft and Magic. The Buckland collection includes artifacts from, oh my goodness, so many names that I'm not going to name them, but among them, Gerald Gardner, and obviously Raymond Buckland, uh, Lady Rowan, Alistair Crowley, ooh, there's a name, uh, Anton LaVey, Sybil Leak, I know all those names, and many, 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 many more, 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 more. Who owns and runs this fine establishment, my friends. Stephen Intermill and Jillian Slain. Stephen, curator of the Buckland Museum of Witchcraft uh, and, uh, and Magic, too, has long been fascinated by the history of the American occult, an interest he has been studying for over 30 years. His favorite thing about the museum is the ability to get lost in Raymond Buckland's archives, the collection of letters, receipts, and general media, gives incredible glimpse into the modern occult scene and its revival. Who is Jillian? She's the director of the Buckland Museum of Witchcraft and Magic. She's a nature lover and a museum nerd who has experience as an exhibit project manager and designer, fundraiser, marketer, and graphic designer. She has worked at several art museums around the country and thinks Cleveland is the best place for a museum of this kind at this time. Her favorite thing about the museum is when people come in unsure but leave enlightened welcome to the program steven and jillian yeah uh, thanks for having us thank you yeah welcome guys definitely a great location great museum uh eric was telling me all about it and i was i was looking up some stuff and uh wow i gotta tell you buckland man he was he was the man i mean he brought it over here he he was one of the forefathers of the movement the witchcraft and magic movement yeah he really was um he was a uh, he was a really interesting person, and the one thing that I really love about Buckland the most is it wasn't just he was hung up about witchcraft. He had a lot of interests that spun around a lot of different things. So truly, like a very well rounded individual, and one of those things he was just really into uh, spreading Wicca across America. Did, so. did he have a mission? I mean, was there a reason in, behind it? I mean, or just a drive to share his passion and what he loved? Uh, it was a drive to share the passion. It was also a drive. You know, he uh, he had a day job, and I think he had a dream of breaking out of that, so he became a writer. 
And uh, I think this had a lot to do with it. I think he saw a need. He was like, you know, I could write about this stuff because I know all about it. So why don't I just do that? He also wanted to educate people, teach people about uh, about Wicca, about the craft, because he didn't want, you know, he got some harassment at times for being a witch. So he wanted to let people know, you know, that it wasn't all bad. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that was important to him as well. Well, yeah, because pop culture, you know, that we... <laughs> And they'd all want us to believe that they're they're standing around cauldrons and boiling children, you know, witches. Well, so you know. So we had an opening here at this museum. There were about three hundred people, and I turned to him very proud. I'm like so excited. I'm like, "Fuck! Did you have this kind of opening when you uh, launched your museum?" He was like, "Steven, some people enjoyed it. Then some people set my car on fire." <laughs> 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 We're talking a true trailblazer of uh, just so much stuff that we all just take for granted now. You know, it's uh, you couldn't just be a witch with a museum and not have people bug you back then. Mm. Now, it's no problem. <laughs> so far, so good. So. It was great up until the car got burned. After that, stuff got real. <laughs> he was a car nut, too, so I'm sure that drove him crazy. Yeah. Though. <laughs> okay, so how did he get involved with Wicca or witchcraft? Wasn't he one of the first to use the term Wicca? How did he get involved in the first place? Well, that would have been Gerald Gardner. He became a huge fan of Gardner, and he, right around when he was starting getting interested, he moved to the United States. And then he moves to the United States, and he starts working for British Airways. And he's really making the first dough that he ever really made in his life, like significantly. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I I really need a hole to fill. Yeah, maybe it's witchcraft. So he starts really corresponding with Gerald Gardner and Gerald Gardner's high priestess Monique Wilson, and then they invite him over to the United or uh, over to Perth, Scotland, to be initiated into Wicca. And he goes over there, he gets his initiation, and he comes home, and he's like all fired up to spread it across America. Well, how did he get all this stuff? Do you have to go to different places to buy it? I mean, how did he acquire all this? Well, well you know, he was working for British Airways, so he could fly uh, easily to various places, I'm sure, cheaply. Um, but also, you know, things were donated. A lot of things are um, from friends or you know, other Wiccans that just kind of, you know, he would ask them and they would send something. It's still kind of the same way it goes now. Um, yeah. We'll ask someone and they'll, you know, hey, consider donating something. And, you know, usually, usually people want to have something, you know, kept here forever. Man, I wish people donate stuff to us, Eric. We only get a piece of their mind once in a while. That's it. It's never the nice piece. Send that gin over here. Don't you guys get haunted objects donated yeah. to you? Well, we, we, they offer it. They they they, yeah. they offer it to us. One's enough. One is plenty. Yeah. Yeah. We we have not taken them up on set offers. Would you take that haunted doll off our hands? <laughs> mm, let me think about it. No. Uh-oh. No, I'm good. <laughs> See now, what's what's funny is I have a long running phobia of haunted dolls, and and so the audience they they think it's really funny to offer them up to me. Like, yeah. Hey, hey, you want that doll? It has your name all. No, I'm good. No, no, you keep it right where it is. Yeah. Dolls are creepy. It, it, yeah. it is. It is a little creepy. It gets a little, little creepy at times. But uh, you know, you guys, I'm sure, have tons of haunted objects in that museum. Only one, and one's enough. Oh. Well, you know, they're not. Yeah, we have one haunted, but the rest are. Yeah, there's a lot of energy that comes along with it because a lot of these items were used in rituals okay. and so you know there's there's just heavy vibes when you come in here there is an affirme that we have a very dubious provenance on that our partner in all this the wonderful tony in columbus ohio she's convinced has got some like really intense vibes to you something bad ha- something bad happened with that knife it killed someone oh well, so it's a murder weapon is what it is. Oh, don't get us shut down. <laughs> it's pure speculation, uh, yeah, my yeah, friend. Yeah, that's, that's for a that's for Wednesday night show, the true crime show. Yeah, 
there's a uh, there's that there's a couple other pieces that uh, Tony reminds us have some things going on with them. Yeah.